Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So we've got some exciting greenhouse developments for April for you today. Guess what? I'm moving to southern Spain and I'm going to sell the whole thing and grow everything outside. Yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at all the things that's going on in the greenhouse. There's been loads of growth recently, lots to talk about, so let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, so we've got all sorts going on at the moment. It's been a while since you've done like a kind of a tour of what's going on. And of course, this time of year, this is when everything really happens. So we're going to work our way around and look at all the things that's going on. So really, what do you think? Is it looking like a jungle? It certainly feels like a jungle at the moment. I think we've almost achieved what we set out to achieve with the jungly look. Um, I've still got quite a lot of gaps up in the upper canopy, as you can see up there. But uh, it's not really that easy to have things dangling from the ceiling, especially when you're my kind of height. I'm six foot six and I don't really want to keep banging my head on things. And of course, it won't take a lot of weight. Although it is a pretty, it's a pretty robust kind of a greenhouse, this. This is a rhino greenhouse, and I know why they called it rhino greenhouse. So anyway, let's have a look at some of these things. So this is my staghorn fern. Now, I've just recently seen on Instagram, and if you're not following me on Instagram, please get over to my description there, and you'll find a link to my Instagram uh, handle, I hope they call handles, the name, the tag, whatever you call it. Uh, you can get, get over there and follow me anyway, and I post loads and loads of photos and videos of things that's going on. So, um, I was looking at the account of a guy called James Wong, I said, as a drip drips on my head. I don't know where that's come from. I think it must be condensation. Uh, yeah, and anyway, he mentioned some staghorn firms. He he's a, one of these TV gardeners. He's a botanist, and he's he's really good. I I enjoy following him, and uh, listening to him on Gardener's Question Time. And he obviously knows what he's talking about. He's a real expert on house plants, and of course, for us <coughs> over here in the temperate UK, anything that's tropical is a house plant. That's what we kind of give them this this uh, broad name as a house plant but really it just means that anything grows in a tropical climate so staghorn ferns as you can see grow very very quickly and this one is growing very quickly and he mentioned an account of somebody in one of his recent posts uh, who only posts photographs i think they're japanese they only post photographs of staghorn ferns and every single one of them is mounted and they look absolutely spectacular and i'm now kind of thinking hmm not really that keen on this great big massive hanging basket full of a staghorn fern. It looks good, but it doesn't look anywhere near as good as the mounted ones. And I'm just wondering how to mount it, because they have quite a big, well this just has quite a big root ball on it. So I'm not really sure how you would go about that. So if anybody has any ideas or can point me to somebody who does like a tutorial on it, I'm, I'm guessing some fishing lines involved, I don't know. But they look like quite a substantial plant on quite small pieces of bark so i don't know it would be nice to see somebody do it before i have a go myself so you can see that my trediscantia zebrina there is looking particularly nice so this is one that we restarted a few times we've uh, chopped off one or two of the straggly trailing branches and put the tips in the top and now i've got a nice bushy kind of semi-trailing plant going on there a bit more drip on my head there so we've got the twinkles, not much growth on my twinkles yet. Twinkles, I'm not talking about twinkles. Tolumnias, tolumnias. Uh, I've moved them. They were over that away. Uh, they weren't really getting much light, so I uh, put them in a, in a more well-lit place. So this is one of my new pelagoniums. I've just bought a few species pelagoniums. So this one is Cididides, Cididides, Cidides, Cidides. Um, and... I thought, when you look at the photographs, I'll try and put some photographs of these pelagoniums up. I know I've done it once before, uh, whether you got to that, I think it was at the end of one of the videos. And they look absolutely spectacular. And you kind of look at them and think, gosh, if anybody's got a species, if you can get a species, why would you go and buy the hybrids? The species look wonderful. But I'll probably find that out as time goes on because maybe they won't grow quite as easily. That's coming back now. Um, I've also moved some of these Nepenthes because they were, and I'll just whiz you around here, they were over there. And at this time of year, that is still quite shady. I know I've got my grow lights, but it's not the same. 
um, they don't get the the real bright sunshine when we ever, ever get any sunshine but although i've said that it's quite sunny at the moment so they already seem to in my view have put on some new growth so a little picture there this is rob cantley i crossed with aristolochioides crossed with spectabilis now that one's quite a nice one this uh, bloody mary is really putting a lot of growth on i'm gonna chop that dead one off there well, you can see all the pictures on this one i did have one of those ones before um, that one's still one nice big picture on it foo skirt never does anything for me don't know what's up with that one nice to see the mandevilla sanderi coming back into bloom again it's had its kind of six weeks off and i've just been hacking it back but i miss these blooms really really beautiful blooms i did have another one over in that corner over there if you remember it and it was hint of pink beautiful flower unfortunately it's gone completely gone and i have no idea why very similar conditions i'm just wondering whether it was just too small a plant went into winter with too small a root ball and for whatever reason even though it was kept at 18 degrees it didn't like it now just check out this nepenthes look at the number of pictures on it and look at the size of the pictures loads and loads and loads now my last tour that i did the sister one over here which was a division of that had no pictures on it that would have been would it have been in february my last tour i can't remember but look how quickly it's grown these large pictures huge huge pictures very very attractive and really that one's just opening up there as well it's going to eat this begonia check out this begonia luxurians look at the size of it i'm going to have to do something with this soon i'm not sure what it does add to the jungly feel but it's getting very very big i believe you can chop them back and maybe that's one that's going to go on the might just go on the floor down here um i'm not really sure i'll have to have a think about that it's like you know you get this jungly feel which is what i was after in the first place but of course that means you're then falling over things and uh, yeah i want the jungle but i don't it's, you know i want i want everything filled with plants but yet i want to still be able to get to things which is just completely upside down another one of these pelagonium so this one is rainy for me again another species pelagonium i got i bought five pelagoniums from fibrex nurseries and only one of them was a hybrid looking absolutely superb this orchid this is the one with the long name uh ring catlianthi shinfong little sun young min golden boy i think we finally got the right name of that one uh, that, this is a stella so this was the only hybrid that i bought you can see my african violets my st paulias are putting on lots of growth i'm still waiting for the blooms on those at the moment so these were my drosera regia very very slow growing and i'm hoping they start to uh, show me you know i'm taking up a lot of space there I mean, we're already going to the point where space is at a premium um, so I'm hoping that you can actually see them without a magnifying glass very soon. But they are still there. And at one point I thought they were they were damping off because obviously, um, if you remember, the coir in there hasn't been washed. But they seem okay. I mean, the moss is growing okay. Um, and you can just about see the very, very small seedlings of Drosera regia. I'll try and zoom in on that, although I know I have shown that before. Um yeah as always this beautiful brassia orange delight doing well i'm also beginning to think this hybrid cattleya it's taking up a lot of space it's not bloomed for two years um, i can't see anything that's looking like well other than root growth i can't see anything that's looking like a new eye or oh, another drip down the back of my neck where are these coming from um <laughs> it's cooling me down anyway uh, yeah so I, I don't know i'm having to think about this because space is becoming more and more at a premium so we'll just move around loads and loads of Tredescantia growth. This is definitely the season for Tredescantia. Get into early spring and they absolutely go crazy. We've talked about before on lots of my videos, the pink one, this one is Maiden's Blush. Those pink leaves will eventually turn green. As you can see there, those are in transition and they will eventually end up totally green like that one. But you could, if you're lucky, in exactly the same conditions get one like this with all this cream on it same plant still try to scan to your maiden's blush 
But as I say, eventually that will go green. And that, that pink will not return. The cream will not return. What will happen is next spring, and I, I just keep cutting these back and cutting them back. I've had that back to the pot. I don't know how many times in the past 12 months because I don't want it to go too big. Uh, but eventually it will come back to the lovely cream and pink colours. So we've got the Begonia Griff on there looking absolutely superb. I've got a couple more... Uh, hippie astrums i think these were species i can't remember i might be making that up i know i definitely were looking for species i might not have been able to find them um, i won't go into details on that just now uh, a couple more this is a trailing pelagonium it's another species that's another trailing not another pelagonium species that one is trifidum trifidum it's a trifid and that one is longi longi carly so that's the one it smells really nice just sniffing my fingers. You've seen the Caleria. Look how many blooms it's got on now. It's looking more and more attractive as a plant. And it's a really nice thing. Lovely hurry leaves. Very tactile. The other one is coming back. Now this one is Brazil Gem. But I think there is a slug. I've seen some slime trails on it. So there's a slug somewhere. And uh, I keep missing it. I keep coming in on a night to try and find it. But I've not been able to find it as of yet. Uh, you've seen the Miltoniopsis. It is actually giving me quite a nice lemony scent now. Now that the sun's out on it, it took quite a few days for it to come. This, <clears throat> this like red, what do you call that? Splash? Is it a splash? That only started, the whole thing started absolutely perfectly yellow with a tiny little bit of red there. And then within the space of about four hours, and that was when the sun was out, it just kind of seeped out and spread through through the blooms. Really nice. Don't know why it did that. Yeah, but it is known as a colour changer. Um, so what else have we got going on here? Um, we've not talked about this for a while. So this one down here is my uh, Miltonia Spectabilis. I'm hoping it's going to give me some blooms this year. It, it's missed a year. Now I think I've probably put that in the wrong kind of a pot. It's in more like a composty thing. When really it wants to be in something like this. So the next time I repot that, hopefully we'll get it right. So we've got a couple of begonias, that's Listada. I'm just letting that trail over like that. I know eventually the whole thing will fall over, but I quite like it like that. These are these begonias are loving this kind of a weather. Um, I've got my little pots of African violets here. Now these, now let me think, this is semi-hydroponics with SMA, I think. I might have got that wrong. I'll, I'll put it up on screen. So this this is a, a lady also from or in the UK, living in the UK, who grows lots and lots of plants in hydroponics, as you can tell from the title. And I just happened to mention on Instagram that I really like one of her plants. I think it was a variegated one. It was this one. And before you know it, she sent me all these leaf cuttings. So very, very kind of it. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, get over to her channel and subscribe to her channel. So I'm also building up my St. Paulia collection now. So I'm hoping, obviously they need a water, but I'm hoping in a little while I'll be able to uh, take those plastic bags off. So she actually sent them in these plastic bags, which is really handy. So all I had to do is pop them up and pop the plastic bag over the top. And there you go. You've got your little humidity enclosed environment. So what else have we got here? So this Adenium, um, I'm hoping these are little buds coming on here. I did get some buds on it last year, but it was in the cooler side. And I think the temperatures uh, just about kill that off. Um, this is that Thumbergia I did loads of videos on. And it doesn't seem to matter what I do to it. It always looks washed out like this. Actually, if I just zoom in on the... Ah, it's got spider mite. Flipping heck, that's why. It's got spider mite. That'll have to come out, won't it? I'm absolutely certain I can see the web in there of spider mite, even from back here. I'm very much uh, attuned to spider mite because I've had so many problems with it. So... What else have we got? We've got some nice trailing, another trailing pelagonium here. This should come into bloom very soon. All these pelagoniums that I've bought recently, these are all going to go over into the cooler side. It's just that I've no room over there at the moment. But things are beginning to change. Um, what else have we got? Another Silomontana. I hope it's not Silomontana. This is uh, Chiriscanthia fluminensis nanook lilac. It actually looks its best from underneath. You get all this lovely pink growth and i saw it growing in a trailing baskets on somebody else's channel and uh, i thought yeah that's a good idea that so we'll try that we'll put it in a trailer see what happens let it trail 
Okay, so we're going to have a quick look over in the warmer, cooler side, I mean, cooler side, and see what's going on over there.